Some people are rich enough to afford a home help, but here's why having it off with the cleaner is never a good idea. It's the classic urban myth. And for getting down behind the upholstery, there's this crevice tool. But it's good for a dozen different things. Including, some say, jerking off at home. The humble handy vac is tops for its super suction power. Hey, cried Mabel from the top of the stairs. What an incredible hose. Alas, a 51-year-old fellow from Long Branch, New Jersey, couldn't have agreed more. He and his hoover were an item, but he was only in it for the sex. So it did what any upright appliance would do. It severed the relationship. And that's how our man lost half his penis in a mechanical love bite. Well, my first reaction was, holy cow, Jesus, I, I can't, oh man, that's got to hurt. Maybe he was just lonely, he figured the vacuum cleaner could help him out. But it wasn't just any old vacuum cleaner. It was practically antique, a Singer Model A9. Had kind of like the... Uh rotary uh, instead of uh, a plastic fan it had a metal fan and that's yeah. what actually got him similar to like what an airplane like the engine of an airplane how it spins in there it had something similar to that and uh worked as a pretty good meat grinder on a spring afternoon in long branch new jersey a man called 911 claiming he was the victim of an attempted murder no one initially suspected a vacuum cleaner was the culprit. Officer Louis Napolitano arrived first to hear the man's story. We got there and there was a gentleman known to me with uh, severe bleeding and mutilation of his genitalia. So he said he brought a hooker home, met her in a bar, and uh, she stabbed him after having sex with him. Certainly the man's apartment bore witness to a terrible attack. All local emergency services were soon on their way, including paramedics John Johnson and Benny Cruz. They walked into a gruesome scene. There was a lot of blood droplets going up the stairs. In the bathroom, it was smeared on the tile. In the bathroom, like, maybe he uh, was either walking and dragging his feet in his own blood, or um, it was leading to, to various bedrooms in the house. Well, at first, the story was believable, but um, I'm looking, and I said, well, wait a minute. That's not stab wounds there. And uh, I said, something's wrong here. And I noticed a little blood trail from the bed towards the closet. And I was, so I'm thinking, well, if he was stabbed, maybe the bad guy's in there. So I go to the closet, and there's a handheld vacuum cleaner with the side bag taken off. I said, bingo. Rather than a gun-toting prostitute, the handy vac was responsible for the bloody mess. Our men had foolishly dispensed with the hose, opting instead for the hole directly into the inner motor. And a good part of his privates were still inside. What he'd wrenched free didn't look too pretty either. To me, it looked uh, more or less like, uh, like ripped meat with uh, lots of blood all over it, um, tissue hanging out, and uh, it was quite gruesome. Painful. I wouldn't uh, advise anybody to, to try that at home. I, personally. I said, you know, there's a metal blade in here. Because <laughs> you know, I'm looking with the flashlights. You know, there's a metal blade in here. He goes, I didn't know that. I said, I think you've never used this before. He goes, no. As everybody chuckled over the irony of it all, the paramedics pointed out that the injured man should probably get to hospital because he was about to die. Had they not got him to the hospital that quick, he would have, he would have probably bled to death, yeah. Without a doubt. A cautionary tale. The end. Well, not quite the end. You see, here are four more suckers who injured themselves having sex with vacuum cleaners. Only they had different excuses. The hoover suddenly turned itself on. I was bending down to pick up my tools. My dressing gown flew open. I was shaving my pubic hair. Well, you've got to admire their inventiveness, but what's the psychological reasoning behind it all? A lot of men will stick their cock into whatever they can just to see what it feels like. But how on earth did this man get second-degree burns on his penis using a melon? Just appalling pain. 
I've never felt anything like it. But first, what about sex as it was intended? One on one. At number six, life was looking good for Leon Metcalf. He'd picked up a girl at his local club and they'd gone for a quick one. In the loo. We skipped the foreplay straight into the sex. And um, she started unbuttoning my flies. And we went, we kind of went from that straight into sex, which probably wasn't a good idea at the time, um, since she'd already had a bit of a drink. It might sound like a bit of all right, but actually a bit of alcohol dries things out. Add in the lack of foreplay, and you've the perfect recipe for a ripped foreskin. While they were having sex, Leon didn't notice anything amiss. It was only afterwards he made a dreadful discovery. I turned my penis over, and on the other side there was like a rip about this big, um, and it was all like it was weeping, blood, and everything. And I was just like, oh, my, I panicked. I really did panic. I think I actually did something stupid, like I tore off a bit of toilet roll and stuck it on so it wouldn't it stopped bleeding. It's just like kind of a big slit and then like fat and stuff like that and I was just, uh, it really panicked me. The thing is, um, this girl gave me a number at the end of the night so I, I, had to ring, I rang her and we, we organised meeting up. I'm there with this like rip on my penis in absolute agony and we, you know, we start kissing again and things are going to happen I couldn't do anything. I really did want to have sex again. But um, I, just not, I wasn't capable of doing it at all. Um, I don't think she, to this day, I don't think she even knows about it. Sorry, by the way. Finally, pain and, let's face it, desperate horniness forced Leon to his local GP. Although he didn't quite tell the truth. I think I said it was some rugby accident or something like that, or a football accident. I can't quite remember. But um, I, I, it wasn't from having sex. He probably knew it was. You know, he's not stupid. He's a doctor for Christ's sakes. Um, and he offered to give me some, um, what is it, uh, the tablets, um, and and he the, the tablets. Antibiotics, Leon. Yeah, them ones. It kept healing and then tearing a bit, and it was just a pain in the ass. It really was a pain in the ass to heal, but uh, it's all right now. Thank God. A ripped foreskin. You wouldn't have thought it could get any worse. Men, that's the sound of a fractured penis. Good God. This is urology specialist Dr Ralph, who's seen more than his fair share of damaged jewels. Classically, it's known as the fractured penis, um, where patients are having quite vigorous sexual intercourse. Um, and then for usually with the... Uh, there is... Uh, the, the patient misses uh, and his erect penis impales on the female pelvis and there's a crack, so it fractures. The penis is left bruised and twisted like a badly made balloon animal. Here's a sea slug and here's a noble swan. And it's quite common. I guess in the course of a year we'll see perhaps uh, 10 or, or even up to 20 patients that will need correction. Such as our man at number seven. While having sex with his girlfriend, our man fractured his penis, splitting open his urethra at the same time. He needed 64 stitches and couldn't have sex for 18 months. What was worse, though, was that his surgeons had gathered and stitched his foreskin together around the tip of his penis. But when he was finally given the green light to have sex again, his bunched skin acted like a giant pump. Result? His girlfriend suffered huge vaginal farts until a second operation remedied things. Ah. Here are some more ways to wound your willy. Penile laceration, catching your skin in your zipper. Paraphimosis, trapping your foreskin behind the head of your penis. Testicular torsion, twisting your bollocks. Strangulation lesion, cutting off the blood supply with a too tight cock ring. Pironi's disease, which you could get by wanking so much your tissue turns to bone. Manny, 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 manny. Being part of an ambulance crew is a very testing job. You've got to know how to assess life-threatening situations, how to deal with distraught accident victims and their relatives, and most of all, how to keep a straight face when you come across someone with a bedpost up their arse. <laughs> At number 13, it was a man getting into the swing of things. But while dancing around, he swung a little too far 
landing squarely on top of the bedpost. A likely story indeed, but that's what the paramedics were told when they showed up to treat his ripped asshole. Number 14 started off innocently, but doing it doggy style was dangerous for one couple, who literally stuck together. It took over four hours and a sedative for the medics to disentangle the embarrassed pair. And number 15 is every man's worst nightmare. A woman was giving her boyfriend a blowjob when a seizure caused her jaw to lock. The only thing the man could think of was to punch his girlfriend in the face several times to get her off him. She had a black eye and broken teeth, and he had to be rushed to hospital for surgeons to sew his penis back on. All this pain in the name of love. After the break, when we say men will put their cocks in anything, it's no word of a lie. And the more experimental they are, the more severe the consequences. Like when you get up close and personal with a hotel pool pump. Wham! You are right up against the wall. Imagine the thoughts that are going through his mind. Welcome back. So far we've learned that embarrassing accidents can befall even the most traditional of sexual encounters. But for the more adventurous among us, experimentation can lead to all manner of cock-ups. But why do people experiment? The old adage, the old Billy Conley joke about sitting in your left hand till it goes numb and having a wank so that it feels like someone else is common. That's why people do it. They'll, they'll, they'll have sex with a melon or a sofa or, you know, a swimming pool duct or whatever it is because it feels as if it's someone else doing it to them. But number 16's experiment was painful, to say the least. This man was tempted by the seeming simplicity of sex with a melon. All he had to do was cut a hole and warm it gently, but even that was too hard. It's a bit stupid, Billy, isn't it? Because I thought I'd better well grub than a piece of bun my fingers, but I didn't think about my bobby, <laughs> um, and that's what got burnt. The penis has around 40,000 nerve endings, making it very sensitive to heat and cold. Just appalling pain. I've never felt anything like it. The melon reached 180 degrees, which is roughly the same as a roasting chicken. It was instantaneous second-degree burns. If you've uh, had an injury, a penile injury, because of a burn, then uh, you'll end up with scarred tissue. Uh, when that heals. Uh, I mean, indeed, you could lose the whole of the skin of the penis. Immediate hospitalisation with antibiotic cream and strict orders to stay away from the fruit bowl gave him back a fully functioning, albeit scarred, Bobby. And from scars to bruises at number 17. As dawn broke across Lakeland, Florida, a 911 call went out. There's a boy car come over here. This is something you got to see. This this is unbelievable. And what's the problem there? I got a man in the pool. He's got his private stuck in the, in the pump line. What? <laughs> You're kidding me. I'm telling you, honest to God. <laughs> you got to stop laughing here. <laughs> and he's in the pool? He's in the pool. He said he's been in there for three hours. <laughs> Kid, we'll get the police out there. Thank you. <laughs> While away on a work trip in Florida, a businessman, let's call him Bob, went for a midnight dip in the hotel pool. He'd been drawn to the rhythmic pump. But three hours later, he was still there. He got the damn shock of his life. Could you imagine now, you got your pants down, you have your winky in a pipe, and all of a sudden, wham! You are right up against the wall. Imagine the thoughts that are going through his mind. And he can't get free. Anthony Marshall, attorney at law, couldn't believe someone could be so stupid. He was so amazed he turned the fateful events of that day into a poem. So delicately entitled, Bob's Big Boy. Early one morning in a hotel pool came a cry in the dark, my tool, my tool. So the clerk used his head and called 911, explaining, he said, this job won't be fun, but please come quick and bring some gel. This guy is stuck and he's beginning to swell. Paramedic Steve Wolfe and his team responded to the 911 call, but they weren't the only ones. 
every local emergency worker who wasn't already on a job had gone to the hotel just to take a look. It had to be quite embarrassing, all those people seeing him in this predicament. So the captain of the medic crew stepped up and said, I know what to do. He turned off the pipe and grabbed onto Bob and pulled as though he liked his job. But Bob was stuck and swelling too. His winky now was turning blue. His problem, his, the reason why he was stuck is the more, harder he pulled on it, the harder it got stuck. John Scott knows a thing or two about pumps. He's a pool expert and suspects it was the vacuum point in which Bob was lodged. We, we believe the fitting in which the gentleman got trapped was a vacuum fitting. A hose is inserted into this, a vacuum head is put on the other end of the hose, and then the vacuum head is scuttled around on the bottom of the pool to remove any debris that may be there. Bob had told the hotel manager he'd been swimming along innocently when he was sucked into the pump. The force that would have drawn anybody towards this uh, would be a velocity-related force, and the velocity decreases as the square of distance from the fitting. What the hell does that mean? What that means in lay terms is you'd have to be pretty damn close to it to have actually uh, benefited from the suction to the extent that it would have drawn you onto it. Things for Bob weren't looking good. With all the tugging going on, his big boy was beginning to bruise, getting bigger by the minute. To make matters worse, the medics discovered another problem, the thread. The thread is there and it's designed to hold on the safety cap. Threads would actually accentuate the, the grip that this would apply to anything inserted in it. I'm afraid I haven't got a clue what the appeal might be. <laughs> The, 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 the danger far outweighs any potential excitement, I expect. All jokes aside, we seriously started considering having to break up concrete, you know, break up the pool to get the guy out somehow. They tried the gel, but it didn't work. But after an hour, it came out with a jerk. All round good guy, Steve Wolf saved the day with a bit of a hand job. By then, uh, there was um, there was no excitement, you know, for him. So uh, I was able to uh, just basically work it out of the pipe. All of a sudden, freed. But what was released didn't look too wholesome. To, to me, it was so deformed, I actually went back to the pipe because I thought maybe there might still, still be some in there. Bob was treated for bruised genitalia. As ridiculous as it sounds, he then actually considered suing the hotel. Well, we're a litigious society in America. We sue for any reason whatsoever. But could you imagine a judge allowing Robert getting into court and talking about his penis episode? Heavens no. And imagine if he even got a dollar and hotels would have to put a sign up in front of every pool. Warning, don't put your penis in the pipe. So ends the saga of the pipe so cruel, which can be called the fool and his tool. Bob's not the only pool fool. This Brazilian man was drawn to the possibility of some free loving, but was stuck for over 10 hours. Fortunately, medics were able to finally free him, but it looks like it wasn't a comfortable procedure. And here are some other places men have got stuck. Steel washers, padlock, buckle, industrial bolt, wedding ring, which, let's face it, you've got to have a small todger to even consider. Now, the only thing worse than getting stuck in those things would be to get arrested at the same time. At number 24, lonely bachelor David Pithers was arrested for sex with a lamppost. The 57-year-old was caught rubbing himself up and down the 30-foot pole with his trousers round his ankles. And number 25, repeat offender Carl Watkins, jailed for sex with pavements. He's also been sentenced for bonking a bin liner, although he claimed it was an extra-large condom. Here are more bizarre sexual partners that have led to arrests. A shoe, traffic cone, underpass, driveway, car, garage, letterbox and a gun. 
It seems there are no limits to what people will experiment with. But don't worry, because I'm assured there are sound psychological reasons for all of it. People want to experiment to see what it feels like, and sometimes it can get to the extreme that it can cause them some damage if, if they never actually make the break and admit that actually it's OK to go to a sex shop and to buy something that's safe, and they end up using something that's very unsafe and unhygienic and at home. But would you raid your child's toy chest for inspiration? Look closely at this X-ray. Those blobs there are doll heads. What's that got to do with sex? Just wait. In 2003, two radiologists discovered a 35-year-old man had ingested multiple doll heads and they'd become lodged. OK, here's a closer view. Turns out there was nothing that excited the man better than masturbating as he excreted them out. How lovely. A new mobile phone craze is sweeping Taiwan. Why clutter your handbag with your phone when you can set it to vibrate and stick it up your back passage? This phone, not this girl, mind you, she's just a model. Turns out the game is to insert the phone with its switch to vibrate and then wait for your boyfriend to buzz you wherever you may be. But doctors warn the game is dangerous. They say it'll lead to loosening of the muscle around the anus and cause incontinence. Here are some other things that have been stuck in the rectum. Glass jar, vibrator, hairbrush, light bulb, deodorant bottle, carrot, bullet, knife, candle, balloon, whip handle, plantain with condom, screwdriver, frozen fish, microwave egg boiler. It doesn't stop with the obvious. Well, place, that is. Nature intended one thing to go through the urethra, and I don't think biros were part of the plan. Insertion of anything in the urethra is, is, is for sexual gratification. Um, it's really something that shouldn't be done. For absolute clarity, this tube is your urethra. And that's a fork. Ah. Any injury, any minor injury to the inside of the urethra uh, can cause scar tissue and, and a narrowing of the tube. And then and in advanced cases, patients may find it quite difficult to pass water and then would need to have that surgically corrected. Such as one Italian man feeling a mite nationalistic, putting dried spaghetti up his urethra. But it didn't stay there. It has uh, obviously gone into the bladder looking at these pictures. There is what we call a stricture, and in, so that's a very narrowed area in the urethra as a result of the damage uh, caused. Um, and so this patient, although he wanted to have sexual satisfaction from this, has now got a serious problem uh, for the rest of his life. And those Taiwanese are at it again with mobile phones. This time with the cord. This is the tube which was stuck for four days. It lodged in the bladder, making it difficult to urinate. It took 20 minutes of careful manoeuvring for the docs to remove the cord, which is marginally better than our next story, which required a new urethra altogether. It was Valentine's Day, and at number 54, one ingenious Romeo thought he'd walk into the bedroom surprising his lover with a flower in his penis. A geranium fitted the bill nicely. Putting it in wasn't a problem, but when he tried to remove it, the hairs on the stem had dug into his urethra and ripped it to shreds. And just when you thought it couldn't get more damaging, Here's one that really finished off a man's sex life, at number 55. A city slicker was having a romantic night in with his missus. After injecting cocaine solution into his urethra in order to prolong his erection, our man suffered extravagant complications. Gangrene meant both legs and nine fingers had to be amputated, although his penis fell off all by itself. 
Here are some more things people have inserted up their urethra. Needles, animal feathers, crochet hooks, knotted string, metal springs. You wouldn't think there could be anything more embarrassing than getting hauled into A&E with crochet hooks up your willy. But coming up after the break, we'll discover the joys and the pain of a DIY staple gun repair job and find out why this man injected two litres of saline solution into his balls. Welcome back to 101 Embarrassing Sexual Accidents. Now, Britain's generally considered to be a nation of animal lovers. But if you happen to be a farmer, here's somebody who'll really get your goat. On August the 14th, 2001, commuters on the packed Bridlington to Hull train caught sight of an unusual activity by the railway line. It was a bad thing that happened. <laughs> a man was having sex with a goat. This is the bit I found quite funny, actually, because the actual report in the paper, if I remember correctly, was something like, um, Chef caught um, interfering with goat in front of the 1510 to Bridlington. Paul had his trousers down and was actually masturbating. Paul was then seen to lasso the goat and have full penetrative of sex with it. In his 20 years as a British transport police officer, Dave Crinian has never before or since charged someone for having sex with a goat. It's not the sort of thing that you deal with every day. On that fateful day, as he indulged in the love that dare not bleat its name, 23-year-old Stephen Hall was in heaven. Well, he was in paradise allotments, to be precise. Police were alerted by a barrage of calls from horrified commuters. But Stephen denied being caught nuts deep in a nanny's fanny. Hall denied everything, said it wasn't him. And uh, it actually demanded an identification parade. What, of goats? Stephen Hall spent the night in police custody and his clothes were sent off for forensic testing. Sergeant Crinian, meanwhile, needed evidence from the nanny goat. So local vet John Leverson was contacted to do the necessary. I basically um, took the samples from her actual anus and her vagina and gave those to the police for their forensic experts to examine. In the meantime, Stephen Hall had absconded to Scotland. We went up there and arrested him, but he, he changed his appearance quite a bit. In fact, he'd gone to all the trouble of growing a goatee beard. Like any good detective story, it was the forensics that clinched it. There was seminal fluid on the goat, seminal fluid on his, on his clothing. There was trace evidence from the goat on his, uh, on his underpants, hairs and so on and so forth. And we received a full DNA profile, which proved beyond any doubt that Hall was responsible for this offence. Hall pleaded guilty and got six months behind bars. The only thing I was worried about, of course, when he went to jail, I thought, I hope they don't send him anywhere they've got a farm. <laughs> and here are four more animal lovers that would make James Herriot's hair curl. Poisonous ants bit a woman's private parts after she'd spread honey on them to attract her cat. A Thai man was arrested for sex with a dog because, in his words, he couldn't resist its sexy tail wagging. A man in Stafford wrapped bread around his penis, but the pet Labrador mistook it for a hot dog. Ouch! And horrified wedding guests expecting to see a tape of the happy couple were stunned by footage of a family friend boning a pit bull terrier instead. At number 66, sex with a herd of cattle. 81-year-old pensioner Stephen Balderson was secretly filmed running from cow to cow, dressed only in a T-shirt, sunglasses and tennis shoes. Stephen wasn't the only person to be caught with his pants down. When Jean Curtis told her husband to stuff the chicken, she wasn't expecting him to use his penis. <laughs> According to Jean, her husband was clad in a blouse and rubber stockings as he lay on the sofa with the bird. Oi, you dirty bastard, Jean said. That's our Sunday lunch. Her husband claimed it was all lies, but it didn't save the hapless couple from divorce. Here are more instances where sexual antics got men into trouble with the missus. 
A man was arrested for leaving his girlfriend handcuffed to the bed for eight hours while he had a kip. A woman bit her husband's penis because his hard-on went soft. In Mexico, a man was stabbed during sex with his lover after he repeatedly called out his ex-girlfriend's name. While in Nashville, a man's testicles were ripped off by his gal for his cheating heart. One woman cut her husband's penis with a knife after he asked for a blowjob. And another severed her husband's penis completely after he'd had an affair. A groom-to-be suffocated while his face was buried in the stripper's breasts at his stag party. And just in case you thought it was all about men's wrongdoing, a 74-year-old woman died from a heart attack having sex with her toy boy lover while her husband slept in the next room. Naughty granny. Coming up, an extreme way to cement a relationship. It's nasty. The immediate effect would be, I would think, a severe burning sensation. It is a very versatile material, but that's not one of the uses that I put it to. But first, meet a man whose dalliance with drugs led him up the garden path. All the way to the barn door. When he told me that he just, he loved animals, you know, and we told him it's all right to love animals, it's not all right to love animals. The sleepy Mississippi town of Pass Christian was kept clean and law-abiding by Sergeant Ricky Dido and his investigating partner, Troy Peterson. Until one day, the town was shaken to its white picket roots by the actions of Carl Patrick Brown. He had sex with a horse, plain and simple. I mean, it, there's a lot of different reactions you could have to this, but just sick is, is the best one I guess you'd come up with. The story begins in May 2000, when a local farmer had noticed things were amiss in his barn. There was a farmer or a local resident in the city of Pastor's Chan that was having problems with his animals. Each night, the farmer would tie up his horses, but in the morning, they'd be in a different place. He suspected local teenagers were pulling pranks, but without around-the-clock police surveillance, there was no proof. So he took things into his own hands and set up a CCTV camera in his barn. But he wasn't quite prepared for what he'd see. He captured, you know, the incident on film inside his barn. For legal reasons, we can't show you the footage, but... This gives you an idea. It shows Mr. Brown coming into the barn area and he's leading a horse into the barn. And basically what he did was he took a, a wash bucket and just turned it upside down and got it behind the horse in the stall and had sex with it. The police recognised the culprit straight away. He was the local drugs dealer. They arrested him immediately and showed him the tape. Once he saw the barn footage, he got very, very nervous, very scared, crossed his arms in a very, you know, uh, defensive manner and began watching the tape. One of Brown's excuses for his behaviour was that he was high on ecstasy. <laughs> well, I've never seen this in Ibiza. Every time he gets high on ecstasy, he said the, he goes and finds a horse. I got animals myself. I got horses. You know, and my main question was, was this the only horse that he did? Because I have horses too, and I'm making sure he hadn't been in my field. There aren't many statistics available on bestiality, <laughs> but based on what we've seen so far, it's more common than you'd expect. To feed the need, LA's sex toys manufacturer, Tia Lawyer, has cornered the market with her ingenious product line, Animal Dildos. The first product is called Mr. Ed, and that is an anatomically correct horse penis. It's very realistic, and it's been a very good seller for us. And the second one is called Moby's Dick, and it's an anatomically correct whale penis, although we did have to scale it down some because we felt the size was just, uh, it just wasn't going to work. It was just too huge. The other is called Clifford. And that is a uh, anatomically correct dog penis. Perhaps Carl Patrick Brown would have done better had he purchased a Mr. Ed instead. He was sentenced to 10 years in the slammer. At number 77, here's another man who suffered for horsing around. He was kicked in the face by a four year old filly's hooves and arrested on suspicion of sexual assault on an animal. 
But that's not the worst injury you could sustain from trying to have sex with one of our four-legged friends. <laughs> Number 78 was a bit of an ass. He was fooling around with a donkey and had his penis bitten off completely. And here's what's left. Most normal blokes might put a pound in a condom machine before a night of passion. But as we're about to see, there are some fellows who'd rather keep the quid and put their knob in the machine instead. Jim liked masturbating against a grinding wheel. If that doesn't sound painful enough, just wait. One day, as he approached orgasm, he stopped concentrating and leaned too close to the belt. His left testicle was ripped off immediately. Quick-thinking Jim grabbed the staple gun and pinned his scrotum as best he could. Not surprisingly, it went septic. The doctors pulled eight rusty staples from his balls and advised Jim to try the dating pages. Here are some other instances where equipment got in the way. A woman badly bruised her labia on a bucking bronco machine. A phone sex worker sued her bosses because masturbation on the job led to repetitive strain injury. A US judge has been suspended for using a penis pump in court. A German couple climbed into the car boot to have sex but got trapped inside. A man's penis was damaged using a circular saw while trying to free himself from a wheel bearing. A man was killed masturbating with two sanders. And a security guard suffocated while wanking in industrial cling film. And at number 87, more technology going wrong. A Brazilian man was fitted with a mechanical penis implant, but refused to pay for it after it was set off every time his neighbours used their TV remotes. Eighty-eight. Little did German expat Manfred Lubitz know that when he was getting hot and heavy last March on the Costa del Sol, he'd be electrocuted by his own orgasmatron. In Torre del Mar, the shops were closing for the afternoon siesta, and 65-year-old Lubitz was at home with his favourite porn movie, Hot Vixen Nuns, and his favourite pastime, electro-stimulation. Lubitz was wired up to his homemade electrics machine. One tweezer was on his penis, the other on the machine. He boasted that his creation was better than a woman and a lot cheaper. But Lubitz got the shock of his life when there was an unexpected power surge. Un ciudadano alemán ha muerto electrocutado cuando probaba un aparato que él mismo había fabricado para excitarse sexualmente. La policía ha encontrado el cadáver en su casa de Torre del Mar en Málaga. La escena era verdaderamente... The thing was truly unexpected. This gentleman had already started to decompose. Juan Antonio is an officer in the National Spanish Police. They found it hard to believe Lubitz had been using his deadly machine for erotic pleasure. A good policeman never thinks in something so accidental. You need to think that we could be facing an apparatus of torture. The police were right on the money. An apparatus of torture is exactly what it was. Lubitz himself was the torturer. And his fried genitals were the victim. Here in the UK, Japanese dominatrix Madame Tachibana gives her slaves a buzz. They all like electrics and to them it's a good way to show their pain threshold. That's the way to prove their love. Wire up your genitals with a Brillo pad and you're away. You're a strong boy. The tingling sensation is what had inspired Lubitz. Very good. Need to be higher. Mm -hmm. But back in Malaga, word had spread of his autoerotic death. I'm not certain, but there were some rumours that the machine was called Orgasmatron. Pablo Almaguera, a writer for the local newspaper, sensed a scoop and he jumped right on the story. Personally, one of the details which caught my attention was that this man had heart problems. 
and it interested us greatly that even with heart problems, he had those sexual practices. As the forensic team later determined, it was a heart attack brought on by electrocution that had killed Herr Lubitz. I was thinking of the Rolling Stones song, I can get no satisfaction. <laughs> or perhaps Jumping Jack Flash. Now, if you want to try electro-stimulation, don't simply wire your bits to the mains with some old tweezers. Leave it to the professionals. Penetrate you on your asshole. It's good, isn't it? Oh. 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 Coming up, we give new meaning to the phrase builder's bum, as we find out why sex and concrete should never mix. Join us after the break. Welcome back. Now, most blokes would get a kick out of having bigger balls, but a scrotum the size of a grapefruit? For some chaps, there's no greater thrill. All the same, injecting chemicals near your privates can only mean one thing, extremely embarrassing sexual accidents. <laughs> How about these mishaps for starters? A man coated his girlfriend top to toe in yacht varnish, which they couldn't remove without emergency help. A woman burnt her lips during a blowjob after her husband had rolled in poison ivy. A couple were killed by exhaust fumes having sex in a car. A Thai man was robbed after sucking boobs drugged with a sleeping potion. While in India, a man was burnt after applying animal bile to his cock. Hair gel's no good either, as one man masturbating with the stuff found out, suffering a severe allergic rash. And in the kitchen, a man's penis was burnt when his wife dipped it in curry powder during a sex game. From one chemical to many. At number 96, what does an overdose do? They had erection for two days. But on the third day, Sergei's erection cost him dearly. Wanting to be hard all night, Sergei took a cocktail of high-potency drugs. But he went a step further. He injected amphetamines directly into his penis. The constant rush of blood to his member was too much. His penis literally exploded. Although surgeons have reconstructed as much of his member as possible, it's doubtful he'll ever have a normal erection again. But Sergei isn't buying it. He's convinced he'll be up and running in no time. And speaking of getting up, at number 97, how about blowing up your balls? Scrotal inflation. Two words that don't seem like they should go together. But the dangerous practice of filling your sack with up to two litres of saline has really taken off in BDSM sex parlours. People who are into the BDSM scene take themselves and what they do quite seriously. It's not just something that they, they fraternise with. As a result, they'll clean their equipment, they'll look after things, they'll make sure that it's safe, they make sure that they're in an environment where they're not going to come to any harm. But if you're shy about visiting a dominatrix, and let's face it, who wouldn't be, then there's another way. A DIY kit on the internet. Anything medical that's DIY uh, should be discouraged, uh, in my opinion. That was a sorely learned lesson for one 37-year-old man concerned about the size of his genitalia. He found a website that supplied him with a scrotal inflation kit. He set about his business and injected just under a litre of saline. The salt water itself is not going to cause any damage to the tissues, uh, but clearly if the, the needle that's used to insert, if that damages any blood vessel or... Um, or any other important structure, then, of course, there may be serious consequences of it. Yes, just to clear up any confusion, this is what one litre in your sack looks like. And what fans like best is having big balls for at least a couple of days while the saline is reabsorbed. But unfortunately for our DIYer, over a week later, his balls were still enormous. In fact, the case report stated... The swelling of the scrotum completely consumed his penis. As far as chemicals go, glue can be used on a dozen different surfaces, but that doesn't include your genitals. Here are three people who got into extremely sticky situations. A man attempting to fix his glasses, while naked, with a hard-on, dropped superglue straight down his shaft. An angry lady glued her unfaithful boyfriend's penis to his abdomen. And a husband glued his cheating wife's hands to her lover's penis. That'll learn her. 
We've saved the best until last. At number 101, it's a story of chemical abuse which is quite literally hardcore. A sexual act that starts off sloppy and wet, but ends up rock solid. This is a genuine X-ray of a 20-year-old man who had 275 grams of solid concrete stuck up his bum. Mike Grantham, not the man in question, is a chemist with a passion for concrete. I hate to use the term expert. It's a, it's a dangerous term. I'm a lifetime student of concrete. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating material. You'd think no one could love concrete more than Mike. But as this perfect concrete cast of the rectum proves, a gay couple gave it a damn good try. According to the medical report, the patient and his boyfriend had been fooling around. After stirring a batch of concrete mix, the patient laid on his back with his feet against the wall at a 45 degree angle, while his boyfriend poured the mixture through a funnel into his rectum. But as it hardened, it became excruciatingly painful. It's got the pH of oven cleaner. It's, uh, it's extremely caustic. The immediate effect of fresh concrete touching soft tissue is severe burning. What's worse is that the human ass is literally a perfect concrete cauldron. Inside someone's body, it's nice and warm and moist. It's exactly the conditions to make concrete set quickly, um, which is exactly what I understand it did. After surgeons dilated the anus, the couple were left with a super paperweight. If you could use some sex tips that won't end in a trip to hospital, text LOVE to 83188 for daily sex advice direct to your mobile. Well, next Monday at 10.50, Peter Kay stars as all the characters caught on camera at a motorway service station. Next tonight, you know Victor's going to have his say in Big Brother's E-Forum.